Should I use FAT32 or NTFS on a flash drive? Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com, where I've been plagued with flash drives probably for a couple of decades at least and answering questions about them since 2003. So here's the question. I always use KeePass installed on a USB stick. I bought a new stick for this purpose. It is formatted as FAT32. Can I leave it like that or do I have to change that to FAT64 or NTFS? Well, one thing we could rule out really quick is FAT64. There's no such thing. But the distinction between NTFS and FAT32 and another format that I'll mention actually does have some interesting ramifications and they each have their place. So first we need to talk about file systems. A file system is nothing more than how the information is stored on a disk. NTFS and FAT32 are two different ways of organizing information on a hard disk. There's really no perfect analogy, but one that I will use anyway is think of a reference book. When you think of, say, a textbook or other reference book, you have many options in how the information is going to be displayed, organized, printed and such in that book. The type can be large or small. The chapters can be long or short. There could be a table of contents. There can be an index. There could be footnotes. The footnotes could be at the bottom of every page or they could be collected at the end. There could be references at the end or again on each page. There's a lot of different ways of organizing what is essentially the same information. NTFS might be something along the lines of a book that has it all. The table of contents, the complete index, the footnotes, the references, everything you could possibly want um, in a file system or in a book is in NTFS. FAT32, simpler. It might have a table of contents. The print might be bigger. Uh, there probably aren't any footnotes. There may or may not be an index. And if there is, it's very simple. So you get the idea, FAT32, the older of the two, by the way, and it is a more simple way of organizing information on the disk. For the most part, the differences between the two rarely come into play. There are a couple of cases, especially lately, where one of the limitations in FAT32 has started to impact people. The problem with FAT32 is that it has a limitation on the size of an individual file. You can have terabytes of files on your FAT32 disk, but each individual file can be no larger than four gigabytes. That sounds like a lot, but especially lately, as we are using digital cameras that are recording high definition videos, those video files are now more commonly exceeding four gigabytes in size. The result is, well, it depends on the camera, of course. There are different solutions to the problem. But this is one of those cases where flash memory is being used, not unlike the thumb drive that you're talking about. That brings us to a third alternative that's at least worth knowing about, and that's EXFAT. EXFAT for Extensible File Allocation Table, or Extensible FAT, is actually intended as a simple upgrade to the FAT file system for the programmers that are writing the software to access the disks. It does away with some of the limitations that are included in FAT32 and is specifically designed to have somewhat better performance on flash memory, like flash drives, SSDs, and the USB thumb drive you're talking about. So, for example, if you have a camera that supports it and your video files are going to be larger than four gigabytes, then there's a good chance that the camera will do EXFAT and that if you use an EXFAT formatted SD card, you'll be able to store those video files without any modification. This actually brings us to the real issue, and that's compatibility. FAT32, because it's older and simpler, is supported by almost everybody. Your computers, regardless of who makes them, your camera, your phone, all of these will very likely support the FAT32 file system for storing files on USB sticks and SD memory cards. NTFS, well, it's really only a Windows thing. 
Yes, there are ways to read and write NTFS formatted drives on other operating systems, but they're typically add-ons and they're not necessarily built into the operating system. EXFAT is becoming more and more popular because of what I mentioned earlier about it being better suited for flash memory and removing some of the limitations of FAT32, but your old camera isn't going to support it. Your old computer probably doesn't support it. So it's one of those things where the devices that you use are probably going to drive exactly what format you want to use. So KeyPass, it's going to create a database that's probably not really all that big. A small thumb drive will do just fine. There's no reason not to leave it configured, leave it formatted as FAT32. That way, that thumb drive will work on any computer you have, be it Windows or Mac or Linux, and any computer that runs KeePass will be able to read the database. If, on the other hand, you are looking at transferring video files that are very large, then sure, consider using EXFAT. And of course, if you're in a Windows only environment, you're certainly free to use NTFS, which gets rid of all of those limitations and includes some other features as well. My recommendation is a very simple one. When you get a flash drive or an SD card, it's probably going to come pre-formatted in some way. Those thumb drives are probably gonna come pre-formatted as FAT32. There's no reason to change that. Your SD cards are going to come formatted as either FAT32 or EXFAT if they're particularly large or new. There's probably no reason to change that either. In fact, that's the ultimate answer here. Unless you run across a specific reason to change the format that an SD card or thumb drive comes as, there's no reason to change it. And the only reasons that I can think of at this point to want to change it would be compatibility across multiple different platforms like Windows, Mac, and PC, or to overcome large file size restrictions. That's it. Hope that was helpful. For the original article on which this video was based, for related links, for comments and updates, visit askleo.com slash 124976. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.